it's Tuesday night. night. It's my show. <laughs> Hello. How, How are, are you? you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm great. I'm still recovering from our trip to Valencia. I've been yeah. eating so much jamon that I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I've gained some weight. And I have been investing in new stuff since the crash last week. I had a co terrible computer crash. We had yes. a crash here on our show. And I was trying to do this, um, this uh, uh, phone thing. It was quite difficult. So I understand the people who do, um, do the session on phone. But uh, I have now actually even a, a, an iWatch. And I just wow. love it. It's fantastic. And I bought a new iPhone 12. And I bought a new very strong uh, uh, computer. So that's, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. fantastic. That's good. Yeah, I must say, I have been. Uh, yeah, you were for, you for a bit. There is the, the technical guy among us. So he's he's doing everything on the all the all the passwords and things. He knows them. <laughs> I, I think that uh, your music will sound a little bit better now. <laughs> <laughs> With <a strong> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> of course. Uh, but anyway, Christian, tonight. Yes. Fantastic guest. Yeah, and fantastic guests. I was I was so happy to see that that uh, Neil Cabaret is joining us. Neil mm -hmm. is doing this uh, uh, my version of the pictures at pictures at an exhibition. Uh, he's mm -hmm. opening the season with the Israel Sinfonietta, and uh, and then we have of course Elad, who were uh, from Israelenko Orchestra, who was playing uh, the bassoon part in this. Uh, mm -hmm this on this recording which is a live recording of course mm -hmm. with only one percussion player yeah i mean that was the challenge we we yeah. we, uh, we decided we were going to go on tour to many many places to spain we were going to austria we were doing japan we were doing all sorts of things uh, and this was going to be the the tour piece very sort mm -hmm. of uh, economic tour piece but uh, unfortunately they closed down the orchestra so that's life yes they did and that's very sad very sad, very sad. but now but still, let's uh, let's hear something shall we yeah let's listen all right let me just share some audio here with you all music lovers this is from the recording that are appearing on all digital platforms this very evening we're hoping for. So this is the Great Gate of Kiev, right? Yes. Mm, the sort of it's fantastic music. Okay, here it is. So the, the, the challenge here, of course, is mm. that there is only like six first violins, mm. six, uh, seven, six seconds, and they're, they're double woodwind, one percussion timpani player, mm. and four brass players only, two horse, two trumpets. So Guy wow. Tariq there, our fantastic first trumpet, he had to really work hard there. This is, of course, a live version also with mm. all the all the excitement of that. So, so I was really really proud of this orchestra. It's, it's in fantastic. They're moving all of them to Jerusalem Symphony Orchestra. So. That's great news for the musicians. Yeah, for the I musicians. Mean, that's, wow. that's fantastic news. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, uh, and uh, in fact, we have uh, Elad with us tonight. We have him here. Do we dare to Woodwind, bring him on? Uh, what do you think? My the anchor of the woodwind play. Exactly. So Let's uh, that. bring him in. Bring yeah. him on. Welcome, lad. Welcome. 
Fantastic to see you here. Amazing. And you're amazing playing there with all the woodwind. It was really fantastic to hear. <laughs> you remember to tune that that uh, that note was uh, was a challenge. Uh, we, we did pretty well, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. So how is life? How is life, Ilad? Tell us. Life is okay. Uh, weather in uh, Israel is uh, too hot, as you know, in August. It's terrible. And we're very excited about uh, the changes that are happening with our orchestra, new beginnings. Hopefully, cross fingers, it will work for the good. And uh, well, Corona-wise, we've been quite good so far um, relating to the other world, you know, it was, we got back to, uh, to perform and we did uh, most of the, uh, from the middle of the season, we uh, did uh, full concerts, nearly full. Um, yeah, so. And now, and now you're moving to Jerusalem. Yeah, it's not really sure how it will happen. Basically, the plan is that we go on as a separate unit, as ourselves, doing uh, most of the work that the current work that we're doing as NKO, uh, and joining the symphony for its larger project or just specific players as needed. Okay. Uh, vice versa, they are going to uh, give us uh, players from the from the symphony to uh, the missing uh, spots in our orchestra. So, yeah, this is uh, so we're going to have a base of work, a rehearsal room, and uh, a library somewhere in the center between Natania and Tel Aviv or something. It's not close yet. And this is going to be the core of our work, um, and the rest will be. Uh, how much work we're going to do with the symphony is okay. A big okay. question mark. Yeah. But at least, at least, this guy from the uh, from the Jerusalem, he did a fantastic job, isn't he? He's a hero, so fighting for for the orchestra, for the musicians. That's that's so great to hear. And yeah. So, and that, let's go to the to the um, the Mussorgsky. Tell us some some of your experiences of doing this piece? Was it difficult? Was it, uh, well, tell us about well, it. Well, you know, I've been um, played many versions of uh, this uh, piece, the original one and some other arrangements uh, for jazz, uh, trio of your own, and there is one chamber as well, but, it's the first one done by Maestro Christian Lindbergh that is really orchestrated differently. And this was a refreshing change um, of that piece because as you all know, it's written for piano and it's all about pictures and colors. So Christian, you gave new colors um, by choosing different solo instruments, instead of the very famous ultimate, don't touch that one, <laughs> <laughs> people say, but it came out, it works very well. And as you probably know, Nier's orchestra is, has played some of it last season and they're going to play, I think, all of it in the upcoming season. Yeah, I think they're in fact opening, opening the whole season with this. So that's yeah. It's very good. Speaking of near, I think uh, we have a guy that wants that's knocking on our door. Should we let Whoa, him in? He's here. Near Kabarati. He's, here. he's in, in from Los Angeles. Welcome, Nir. Hello, thanks nice for having me. Nice to have you on the show. Fantastic. 
<laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great that you you could could be here. I know you're in you're in Los Angeles or Santa Barbara or correct. Yes, in California. In yeah. California, exactly. Fantastic. You're doing you're doing uh, concerts with your orchestra there, Santa Barbara Symphony Orchestra. Tell right. us. Right. You know, uh, part of the so as we had to postpone the last season as we stopped in March of 2020. You know. Um, we basically said to the audience, you cannot get the money back, but we will give you the concert back whenever we can perform safely. So the time came about a year later, and then we have a deficit of concerts and programs that we have to bring back. So the, the good things, we didn't have to start to sell from scratch. So the concerts were well attended, but it was a lot of concerts that we just uh, finished. Uh, so I had seven programs within the last two months with my orchestra, which I never do too many. <laughs> uh, was 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 lovely to go back and to perform in front of live audience that's for sure yeah that's fantastic hmm. and uh and tell me i, I want to know something because i'm a i'm a great friend of uh of zubin of course I, we did uh, the barrier Bar wrote a trombone concerto for me which we did all over the world uh tell me you you were assistant with him how was it tell us some stories about it you know uh yeah it's interesting i'm coming from an operatic background you yeah. know i started as a coach and then i became concert master and, and, um, and course master in um, oh, yeah. the opera in vienna and then i moved to madrid where i got my first position as uh, um, assistant to the music director and then the theater in florence the opera house maggio musicali heard about my work and they invited me to play. So I never actually met Zubin until I was there. And for about three weeks, I didn't say one word. I could speak pretty well Spanish. And, you know, I studied Italian in school, but, you, you know, he was asking something and I was answering in si or no. So he couldn't really figure out my accent. But after three weeks, actually a trombone player from the orchestra told Zubin, you know, he's an Israeli guy, uh, and he was like looking at me and said, how come you never talked to me? You know, I, was, <laughs> I was 35 years old, and uh, of course, you know, a lot of my teachers played, were playing in the Philharmonic. I knew a lot of my colleagues from, you know, the military band, from uh, the high school, the music high school. So I said, you never came to see me? And I said, I, Maestro, I've seen you about 400 concerts, but I thought... <laughs> I thought we should meet like in the right opportunity. It finally came. So yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And you're opening. You you're doing this. Uh, that uh, also one thing I want to ask you about because how many of the versions uh, of of Mussorgsky have you done? Have you done the, the wood or the uh, the uh, the first version, Funtek or, or any of those, or only Ravel? You, you know, I actually did the very first version of, uh, of the piano stuff. I actually play the Mussorgsky piece. Oh. So I'm, I'm coming to the, to the old orchestration as a pianist. You know, I play this. It's actually was part of my second degree, uh, you know, uh, tab oh. in, yeah. in Vienna. We had to play, you know, a solo piece. And I said, why should I, I should play something that would be meaningful because I always love the piece and, you know, listen to the legendary orchestration by Ravel. Um, and I did hear another um, perf an, another really live performance of a uh, Russian uh, arranger, which I don't remember. Yeah, what it's it the was. first one that I, I don't remember the name either, but that was the first uh, ever done. And, yeah, and I do remember it was a large orchestra. Yeah. So so that was very impressive. Uh, but, you know, then you hear Ravel and I played yeah. the Ravel with, I think, four different orchestras. So yeah. I, I know the piece pretty well. And uh, but I. I never heard a chamber version. And oh. <laughs> so when, when my musicians told me there is a, a beautiful uh, arrangement by Maestro Lindbergh, <laughs> I reached out to you and I was so delighted because now you send me the score. And uh, it's, I, I totally agree with Al Ad who said before, it's so refreshing because even though it's written for a smaller orchestra, it doesn't sound small. It sounds yeah. wide because the way you orchestrate it is, is very open. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. it's Christian. colorful. You, and, you, made, um, you made an arrangement, arrangement for trombone and piano as well. Yes, that's, that's, why, is, that's right? why also it was, it was easier for me to do it because hmm. I, I did the trombone and piano 
uh, together with Roland Penton and my my dear friend, and and it was it was like uh, I before I was so programmed with Ravel because I used to play it. I played it on tour with Fra uh, Raphael Friedrich de Burgess in the orchestra in the Swedish Radio Orchestra. And then I had that. And then when I went to the piano version, I got one idea. And, and also, of course, with these great musicians in, in Israel NK Orchestra, it was so fun to write. For instance, oh, the opening I wrote specifically for Hila in Zavari Pele because her oboe sound is so great. And a lot of things I, I wrote for Guy and right. also the bassoon, of course, for Elad. And, and, and that was fun. So. We'll, and and we'll I have, have to a, say, I, I are you lying again, Christian? What, what are you? Oh, no, no, oh, no, no. Are you lying? Can what? I just can I just feel? I was right now visiting the Santa Barbara Symphony Orchestra gift shop on the web. You can actually buy a figurine of <laughs> Mr. Cabaretti. Yes, so I got this. It's it's very <laughs> lookalike, and they call it souvenir. <laughs> That's ah, I'm so going for that pun uh, pun thing today, but I think it's so nice that this show has expanded because there haven't been many people are not really clicking on on these links. But uh, uh, today I, I think we'll get a lot of views. Why, <laughs> but Christian? I want to a lot Christian, of views. Want to uh, That's a. Uh, that's it. You're out of here again. As oh, you always no, are. Circumcises. I'll be back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're out of here. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's have censorship now. Lot of views. <laughs> Come yeah. on. I'm trying He's to not be out. He's not out. Not to Put him rude. out. Try not to be rude. Because no, I really rude. respect these two great musicians <laughs> and bassoon player as well. I just have such great pleasures from bassoon players <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Not to mention Vaughn Williams and... No, 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 come on! Frederick, Frederick oh, is the author of the double... I'm just, nice. I'm just being nice right? to me. I'm just being nice. <laughs> so, Sorry, Elad, what's the, time? What's the question uh, for... Uh, Frederick is the uh, composer of the double trombone concerto, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, no. <laughs> <laughs> you believe this guy on? Yeah, no, take him out. Take him out <laughs> quickly. Okay. He's just Thank destroying you. the whole show. Oh, okay, so sorry, Nir and Elad. We're, sorry, we're Nir, we're very sorry. We we are we are apologizing very very. <laughs> we have such uh, troubles with viruses and people entering our firewall, and that guy is responsible for all of it. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but Chris, so I wanted to. I wanted to uh, yeah. congratulate you. It's really a beautiful uh, uh, version of the pictures. And, and, uh, and, and one thing I particularly like, because coming from the piano, I never understood why Ravel wanted to get rid of one of the promenades where you brought it back before the market of Limoges. I said, wait a second, that's, that's totally new yeah. take on that. So that's beautiful. And then I had a question and I think it was the Samuel. Um, yeah there is uh, a different note. And, and I checked with the piano score and I said, like the end of that, you changed the note. And I would, yeah. would like to know where that comes from. Well, that comes from, there is a, a version, one version, uh, there are different versions. There's one brass version for, for uh, uh, made by Elgar Howarth. And also there are, there are, you mean the pa 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 that one. Exactly. Pa, 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 pa. Yes, exactly. that's supposed to be the correct, the, you know, they argue about that one, which one is right. correct or not. And I, I decided to use this one. <laughs> it's very great that you noticed. So, yeah. yeah. No, and you know, one thing in particular, I mean, I actually just listen, I mean, you know, the good thing about having jet lag that I had a lot of time at 5 a.m. this morning. <laughs> To yes. listen to your music, and <laughs> but I have to say that that the catacumba was strike me in particular, because you know, for example, this is you know as a pianist, that's the yeah. most horrifying thing to play because you have to play you know to on long notes on the piano, doesn't you know give you the resonance that you use an orchestra. But I thought you know Ravel, I mean, did a great job. But your take on this actually took it a step higher because wow. it, it brings the colors, the shift of the colors 
in such an amazing uh, way that I didn't see it in Ravel. And the last thing I want to say that why I really like it and uh, is that the balance work so much better. You know, of course, there, you cannot say anything against a master of orchestration like Ravel. But what I felt, and I heard the piece many times that I conducted it myself, but also hearing other orchestras, the old sections that you think the strings are so down in the, in the balance against the brass. So the fact that you use just four brass against, you know, eight woodwinds mm -hmm. and a string orchestra, even though it's a small string orchestra, the balance was much favorable in, in a better kind of condition, I would say. And so I loved it. And I think well, this, this could be a lot, played a lot, especially. Yeah, in thank you. I was, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that because I was told when I did this and told a lot of people about it, but how the hell are you going to do the catacombs with <laughs> only four brass players? And I was, I was really afraid. I was thinking, how do I do it? And, 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 and I felt, wow, 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 wow. But then also, because I have also really, but no, no, but I mean, I have great players. So I know, for instance, the trumpet part is very difficult there. It's like pretty high and pretty, pretty, it will be quite exposed. But uh, great to hear. I think we have it there. Uh, yeah, let's listen uh, to the catacomb right now while we'll yeah. bring the real Frederick back on. Actually. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, right. uh, that's how, how it how it came Beautiful. out. Beautiful, yeah. Frederick. Awesome. Welcome now, is the real Frederick who wrote. Yeah, me. nice to see Thank you. you. <laughs> I hope I didn't offend anyone this time. <laughs> <laughs> Not more than last that week. This is your job. This is your job to be on that's the my job. Actually, right. <laughs> I think Fred Frederick I came out all right this time. Patrick, I want to say something. You really surprised me with the souvenir. It's a great, uh, but but I actually do have a bubble hat that my other oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That, that's the orchestra. Uh, that was the the present my orchestra in Florida gave me, uh, and I just stepped down before the COVID. So I, I thought he was mentioning that, but you made a great job about it. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. And I didn't know that, but that was a brilliant uh, sort of. It back. It was yeah. great. Frederick, what is your experience of, of these pictures at an exhibition? What is your sort of history? Have you heard it a lot or what do you, do you have any? Yes, when I studied to be a composer, this was sort of a central piece for many years. And especially when you study the transition from, from the original to Ravel's orchestration. And there are some interesting things if you have the um, the study the study score from i think it's from eulenburg or something uh, you can find out that they they have the whole orchestration but they also have the original piano below and sometimes uh, ravel has added bars um to to make that sort of extra ambience to the orchestra so there, in, in that version, there would be some empty bars in the piano reduction, um, but that's filled with orchestration from Ravel. That was really uh -huh. So that was from, this, from your study years? Yes. Yeah, with, with, the, with Jan Sandström or? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay, great. That was a very central piece and we, we studied it a lot. Um, so, uh, well, I love the piece, of course, who doesn't? And, uh, and this version is also fantastic, of course. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who's Ladies gonna... and gentlemen, I, I actually think that uh, the link has dropped. I think the album is out there. Wow, fantastic. So I will, as I do almost every week, put the link 
in the commentary field below this very live stream. Wow, yes, here it is. Ah, great. Pictures at an exhibition, Maestro Lindberg and Mussorgsky. Out now on uh, almost two almost two hundred platforms, isn't this yeah. near? Isn't this fantastic with the new? Well, they're the two different things. There's a bad side and a good side. The the terrible side is that all the record companies who make CDs they lose so much money. The the good side is that there are actually at the moment two hundred platforms that you can put it on immediately. Mm. Do you do do you, what do you do with your orchestras as far as recordings at the moment? You know, uh, in America, my orchestra. These are musicians that work a lot in the you know recording industry. I mean, a lot of them play you know the uh, soundtrack of John Williams and Alan Silvestri. These are Hollywood people. It's very difficult to even talk to them because they are, you know, they, that's their main income. So, yeah. you know, I, 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 do, wow. I do hope that that somewhere, you know, in the future, it will be more flexible for orchestra to get things done, to record. And, and you're right, it's not an economic business. I mean, I don't think anyone make money from, uh, from recording, but exactly for enriching people with new versions of music or new interpretation. And the fact that you could send me a link, as I said, at 5 a.m., you know, we didn't need to have, you know, uh, a, an airplane shipping your the, the physical <laughs> CD. I could log in from wherever. Yeah. And so that's wonderful. You're right. There is a, a positive side and a negative side. Yeah. Economic wise, it doesn't make a lot of sense today to produce music. But hey, music was never a, a, a good business. If you want to see that as a business, it's not a great. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Absolutely. Uh, I also um, think that music has always been good in um, sort of adapting new technology. Music will always survive and find new ways into new technology, and that's proven that many times since the LP came and uh, and even before that. So. I don't think music is in danger in any way. It just finds other ways of surviving or expanding or... Yeah. And actually, Nir, what, what we find, Per and I, who, who now created this, this new European gramophone, is that because the, the, the marketing tools are so great, and if you think out of the box in classical music, you can actually reach pretty amazing numbers. We have a lot of... of, of uh, of albums out which are reaching one million, you know, wow. streams. So this is and and it's U.S. dollars, every one million day. U.S. dollars. No, sorry. <laughs> 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 no, of course, yes. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Uh, uh, that that the, the, there are different ways to deliver the music, and and it's so much more international and and you know even you know a local organization can reach out to the um to the entire world and and this pandemic showed us that actually smaller organizations could easily navigate in through tough times you know when the metropolitan uh, opera shut down and the new york phil shut down you know we in santa barbara produced concerts i mean who would think that uh, you know, a small budget-wise organization would put more concerts than the big five, you know. <laughs> so that, that's a different, and, and I think our also importance in the industry uh, as, as organizations became different ones, you know. And, and so I think it's a good for us to reset, to relook. Hopefully, you know, we could go back to live music because that's the essence of music yeah. to communicate live. But I do appreciate the technology, uh, you know, uh, Things that we we see now. Yeah, you told me that you, you actually became sort of a like like a like a video producer, and that's <laughs> well, yeah. It, without wanting, you we become <laughs> experts in doing things that we never thought of doing. Yeah. You know, and and True. and also you know a concert is not like what used to be. Okay, you go with the the cameras and featuring the stage. It has to be now more personal and there are talks about the music and behind the scene component. So I think it's all great. And, and people tell me, oh, I never knew that you know, that's what you do before the concert. Or this is the dynamic between the conductors and the musicians. So, so a lot of good things that happen. Through yeah, this that, that is really interesting because even if we're going back to sort of a normal, normal state of producing music live concert, I think the streaming is here to stay. 
And maybe these are the qualities that we want to, to remain, well, that we want to have, still have, like you say, like the back uh, backstage uh, talks and interviews yeah. with, and maybe we can get music even closer to the audience that we- Yeah, can I interrupt? Because I know Elad, you have, you have to leave right now. Mm. So could you just give the last word of, uh, of we actually need to close down? We have- Famous there. last words, Elad, famous last words. <laughs> famous last words from Elad. Talk about my bassoon concerto. <laughs> please, please don't. I'd love to listen to it, but you know, your uh, double trombone concerto was one of the best experiences we had in our orchestra and our audience. It was a real fun show, really. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. We will meet again soon. Christine. Yeah, we will. Neil, we'll thank you for coming. Wonderful that you, you could do this. And Elad and Pat and Freddy. Thanks. Don't forget to like our Instagram and Facebook and check out the album. It's just now dropped on 200 digital platforms. So, and see Thank you me. next week, music and lovers. Bye, souvenirs. Awesome. Bye, souvenirs. <laughs> bye, bye. Stay cool, even if you're in Southern California or Israel. Oh. <laughs>